You're watching the Clean Commercial Transportation Update. I'm Bill Van Emberg. And I'm Alicia Gildy. On the next episode of CCTU, CalSTAR's Global Director, Christiana Fasagna, details Drive to Zero's new international agreement to fast track zero emissions commercial vehicles. Navistar will give us a virtual tour of their e-school bus that's taking North America by storm. And world fleet leader IKEA is on the cusp of reaching full electrification in New York and in several global markets. They'll share what it took to get there and where they head next. Make sure to register on our website at calstart.org backslash CCT update. And we will CCT you soon. Well, we CC to you right now. Welcome everyone, so great to see you again and welcome for joining us for this June edition of the Clean Commercial Transportation Update, CCTU. Thank you for making Friday your CCTU day. I'm Bill Van Amberg and I'm joined as always by my great colleague and partner, Alicia Gildy. Alicia, great to be back in the saddle. Well, it's great to be back here with you, Bill, and all of our friends at CCTU. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We have a lot to cover in this 30-minute broadcast, but it wouldn't be possible without our incredible team. Casey Okazaki is our producer. Alex Gaddis is always running our controls. Lindsay Olson, who is our intern, is managing all of the graphic design. Megan Fine is managing our industry engagement. And Whitley Porter is always making sure we look great. Well, uh, let's build off that recognition with some recognition of progress, not just industry progress though. Let's start by a broader sign of progress. Juneteenth is now a recognized federal holiday in the United States after way too long away, Delicia. That's right, Bill. Yesterday, President Biden, surrounded by Vice President Harris, members of the Congressional Black Caucus and 94-year-old Opal Lee, a decades long activist to see Juneteenth recognized nationally, witnessed the president signing Juneteenth National Independence Day into law. You know, this is uh, something we talked about last year on CCTU, you and I, and it's been something, you know, this, this was the day that enslaved uh, African Americans uh, were the last to hear about the end of the Civil War and the fact that they were now free. And it was two months after the end of the war, they were finally told by Union troops in Galveston, Texas. Way too long for them to learn now, way too long to recognize this holiday, but now we do. And that is a good step forward. That's right. That's right, Bill, and, I, and it was just great. I mean, some of the remarks that were made by both the president and vice president, I really appreciate what Kamala Harris had to say. We have come far and we have far to go, but today is a day of celebration. It is not only a day of pride, it is a day for us to reaffirm and to rededicate ourselves to action. So, so poignant and true. Well, now we have that great societal progress. How about some industry progress? We had a big day at HFIP. We sure did. <laughs> Holy smokes. All right. So HFIP, the premier California Air Resources Board incentive project for clean trucks and buses, released $84 million for its first wave of funding on Tuesday. The wave of funding was fully committed in that one day. And we were seeing requests for incentives for over 700 vehicles, Bill. Oh, it was powerful. And in fact, it, they, the funds ran out actually in about three hours. So it was on that one day. And it was, uh, we had requests for far more than the ones that we could actually give funding to. There'll be another round for HVIP coming up later in the summer, but there is huge demand out there. And I think that's why we will also give a tip of the hat now to a great friend of ours, uh, Kurt Conrad, who is the uh, director of SARTA, which is the uh, Stark Area Regional Transportation Authority in Ohio. Uh, he, after a year down because of COVID, has reinitialized his borrow a bus, zero mission bus tour. And he actually sent a bus from Ohio out to California this past month, a, a fuel cell powered bus. Uh, and it's really fantastic. Uh, we have BAE Systems, uh, Ballard and other CalSTART partners uh, building that bus. And Kurt, great job in not just using them, but getting them out so people can see them and test them. A big tip of the hat to you, our friend. Yes, great job. Well, and uh, with that, we have also a wonderful lineup today, Bill. Uh, let's go ahead and give a rundown of what we expect today. 
Well, yeah, we've got Cristiano Fasania coming on with us. He's our global director of the Drive to Zero program. He's going to talk about the agreement of nations that we're organizing to be aggressive in deploying zero emission trucks. And we also, uh, we're going to have Steve Mork from uh, one of the world's leaders in electrification, IKEA, talk about their lessons and how they're on the cusp of electrifying their major markets. That'll be exciting. No, that will be really exciting. And we're saving some good fun toward the end of our segment today with a live ride and drive with our friends at Navistar Next, Jason Gies and Kyle Mackey. Uh, they will give us a nice tour of Navistar's electric school bus and then will even take us for a nice little ride. Looking forward to that big time. But I guess we should get started today. Let's, uh, let's get our poll going. What do you say? I say let's do it. And gosh, with all of the excitement around HFIP and what we're going to be talking about today, I think this is a great question to tee up and uh, to hear what folks have to say. So what will North America demand for zero emission commercial vehicles be in 2021? Well, now you've heard that just within three hours, 700 uh, were requested in California. Uh, what can we expect nationwide? 2,000? 4,000? 6,000, okay, maybe 8,000 vehicles? What say you? You know, this is such a, a really interesting question because I actually can see California contributing 3,000 to that number. Not, not to sway anybody's vote, but I think it's gonna, I, I think there's big numbers coming this year. I agree. Well, All what right. do we got? What do we see, Alex? Wow, <laughs> it's kind of an even split across all the categories here. <laughs> Almost 25% across the board here. All right, well, it looks like, honestly, 25% uh, almost for each, uh, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000. Well, let's hope to see that 8,000 number mark. Uh, I think that would be incredible. Yeah, well, it, a, a bit of a boost for 4,000 by one percentage point. So let's, uh, that, that oh. may be right on the numbers, oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we launch into news and then we'll get into our great uh, rest of our program today. Uh, really start with maybe some sobering information that is part of what drives us to continue to be so aggressive in getting the cleanest, lowest carbon emitting vehicles on the road. Two new reports have just come out of the federal government, one from EPA, one from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, Administration. And the EPA, uh, study, which had been held up three years under the previous administration, finally seeing the light of day, basically said that we are in unprecedented climate change times already in the United States. The NOAA report pointed out that we already have a changed climate in the United States, that over the last 30 years, there's been significant change in all of our local climates. Uh, again, sobering news, climate change is not just a future threat, it is a now problem that we're facing. And I think we've seen this certainly in the state of California where we had our own reports that just came out, one of them looking at what's going on with Joshua trees. There is a Joshua Tree National Monument out in our desert that used to be just fully populated with these uh, very unique trees that only exist in this one part of the California desert. And we're seeing significant die off of those trees, even in their native habitat now. And California's fabled uh, giant sequoias, the damage from last year's fires climate change caused uh, were much worse than thought. And up to 20% of California's giant sequoias have been killed or, or badly damaged by last year's fires all climate caused. So that drives us to action, but I think uh, we're also seeing that action is getting deeper uh, with industries. The oil industry is starting to feel the tang of needing to change. Uh, particularly shell oil in uh, the Netherlands was ordered by a court to cut its emissions far more than they were actually thinking of by 45% by the end of 2030, which would put it more in line with the goals that the world is trying to achieve. This is actually really interesting. Uh, the oil industry has never been actually targeted so directly. And several other US companies, including ExxonMobil, have had some changes to their board of directors that are putting them under more pressure. Now, in the news of people actually making changes of their own volition, really like to call out ABB. Uh, they're a big powertrain and infrastructure provider, among many other things they do. And they have committed to fully electrify their fleet 100% by 2030. That's really exciting. 
We also got to see some uh, interesting uh, industry news with companies rising to the challenge. Lightning E-Motors, a big tip of the hat to you. They actually rang the opening bell when they were listed on New York Stock Exchange today. This Colorado-based company has really been going great guns. Also a tip of the hat to Proterra, which this week was listed on NASDAQ. And in, in, in Madison, Wisconsin, of all places, you might say, first fully electric fire truck in the United States is now being tested, but it's being built by two Wisconsin manufacturing companies, Pierce, which is known for their fire truck bodies, and Oshkosh, which is providing the electrified powertrain. So really exciting to see this. We've seen some in Europe. This is the first in the United States. Finally, a sign of the times changing. Uh, we all know Michelin and the tire man for the rubber that they put on the road, but Michelin is actually now adding to their strategy. They are investing in hydrogen, uh, particularly the fuel side of hydrogen uh, for fuel cell electric vehicles. Uh, this is a sign that they're seeing where the future is going and where they would actually like to start investing to make sure they stay relevant in the years ahead. So some exciting news from around the world that brings us back right here to the United States, Alicia. Oh, that's all really exciting news and just great progress by our industry partners. Keep up the great work. We need to save our trees. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill. Really great rundown. All right, well, the pace of change is really accelerating. To further emphasize that, we have brought back our wonderful global director of the Global Drive to Zero program at CalStart, Christiana Fasania, to update us on some exciting news that was just announced during the global meeting of the International Energy Ministers during the 12th Clean Energy Ministerial. Cristiano, wonderful to have you. Tell us more about this agreement uh, to work together to advance zero emission trucks. So thank you, Alicia. Uh, really happy to be here uh, again. So this uh, uh, announcement, that's when eight countries have just issued a call to leading nations uh, to jointly pursue an international agreement. We're calling it the Global Memorandum of Understanding, a Global MOU to really to accelerate zero emission, medium and heavy duty vehicles. So, so far we have um, like Austria, Canada, Chile, Germany, Greece, Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden. And the global agreement really aims at this country's uh, reaching 100% of sales of medium and heavy duty vehicles being zero emissions sometime between 2040 and 2050. Um, and with the ultimate goal of achieving uh, net zero emissions by 2050, to reach our Paris Agreement climate goals. So Christiana, this is really so exciting. And I think the midterm goal is this at least 30% zero emissions by 2030, which really aligns with what California has been doing. Will more nations join? And, and actually the big question to you, what about the US? Yes, definitely many uh, more nations are joining uh, over the summer and really ahead of COP26 in Glasgow in November. So that's when uh, the MOU is finally going to be announced. Uh, as for US, I mean, I can't really speak for the administration, uh, but there's the great news that the United States uh, did rejoin uh, the Clean Energy Ministerial under their electric vehicle initiative. So since Drive to Zero is a key campaign of, uh, of the electric vehicle initiative under the EVI, uh, we're really hopeful uh, that the U.S. is going to uh, to want to to discuss. So really, really uh, hopeful signs here from the administration. Oh, Cristiano, this is so exciting, and I'm loving this. And this all leads to COP26. It sounds like Drive to Zero is going to be showcasing the world's electric trucks at this Paramount event. Uh, do tell us more. Yes, definitely. We're very excited. And one of the main goals is that, so we're really talking about linking the ambition that governments are putting forward with the reality of the technology. So we're planning uh, to stage a zero emission truck expo uh, at COP26, where attendees either in person or virtually are going to be able to interact with a full range of technologies and real products uh, that global manufacturers are making. So there, we're also going to discuss the uh, the global MOU that nations are um, uh, discussing, and then really highlight you know this great momentum that we have of industry and government uh, supporting action for fast adoption. So who have we got? Who who signed up so far? I know it's early on, but I got to ask. It's very early on, and uh, definitely we don't have commitments. 
but we do have like some important companies that signal their interest, like really to participate, like including, uh, you know, some of the big names uh, out there in the traditional OEMs, you know, such as Volvo, uh, Navistar and, uh, and Scania as well. Wow, and who else? Because that's that's a great uh, <laughs> high-powered salvo. I got to ask you. Don't I know stop. you got. I know you got more. That's true. That's true. No, we also got a uh, like some green light from BYD, from Arrival, from Lightning e Motors. We're talking about them earlier, uh, from Teva, uh, and from Volta Trucks, like as well. And we're expecting uh, in the next days and in the next weeks to get support from even more. That's fantastic. Well, great job, Cristiano. It's so exciting to have the global nations aligning so that we're all moving the same direction, the same pace aggressively. And then now to showcase the reality to people who don't get it yet uh, at the Zero Emission Truck uh, Expo. Thank you for coming on with us today, my friend. Definitely. Thanks for having me here. Well, you know, you, you really need fleets to deploy these vehicles as well as the manufacturers to make them. And one of the world leaders in doing that fast is IKEA. We're really pleased this morning that Steve Mulk, who's the project implementation manager at IKEA uh, is joining us. They have committed to going 100% zero emission delivery by uh, 2025. And in their key markets, they had aimed at doing that even sooner, five key markets around the world. So Steve is with us today and gives us an update. They're on the cusp of being able to actually claim victory. Uh, Steve, welcome, first of all. And can you give us an update on your status of your work? And in particular, how are we doing in New York? Sure. Um, great to be here, Bill, Alicia. So yeah, um, we are very close to being 100% in New York. We have two carriers in New York. One of them is already at 100%. The other is very close to getting there. We're deploying trucks about as fast as we can now. The infrastructure is in. And so it's just a matter of some, uh, some fine tuning and getting some, uh, some additional trucks. But I expect that any day now we'll be at uh, 100% in New York. So I watch uh, every, every day goes by <laughs> here and see if, we're, if we've crossed the line yet or not. So we're extremely close. We're extremely close. Hey, that's so awesome. Um, and congratulations on all your progress. So maybe tell us a little bit what has it taken to make this transition? Can you share some of the lessons that you learned and maybe what you might be applying as you're looking at other markets? And have there been any kind of breakout markets that you've explored? Sure. So, I mean, what it takes is it takes, it takes a, a commitment from the top, right? And so the great thing about IKEA is that the, this commitment to zero emission delivery uh, is a global uh, commitment. So it starts at the top and then all of us kind of, you know, uh, join together to kind of get it done. So. But there's so many people involved in internally, our customer fulfillment group, our sourcing group, uh, property and, and, and procurement and everything else that goes into this, uh, our EV task force globally. And then of course, all of our external partners, Fluid Truck, which does our rental program, our providers, XPO and NAL in New York, uh, and uh, ChargePoint and Lightning E-Motors, which you've mentioned before uh, earlier. So it just takes, it really kind of takes a village to kind of get all this, uh, get all this done. It's just, um, uh, so in terms of future markets, it's really about, uh, it's really about infrastructure. Uh, how fast can we get the infrastructure in? Where does the, uh, where does the real estate kind of lend itself to deploying infrastructure that kind of makes sense for our, for our current goods flow? And it also requires um, kind of the internal willingness to change the goods flow if necessary, uh, which in markets like LA mm. is, is going to be the case where you have to kind of shift Goods flow more towards the stores and where the char where the charges are going to be, rather than you know uh, third party locations and things like that. So uh, it does take it does take a significant amount of uh, amount of effort. Yeah. So you know, infrastructure is the 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 really the big dog, and then kind of these new business models for actually de-risking the investment. So with Drive to Zero kind of trying to align global nations to all be moving the same pace, the same direction, how does that help you with your work to get to 100% zero emissions? Right, and, and, and to, be, to be clear, you know, our model, our, uh, our rental EV model is, you know, it's one way, uh, it's not the only way, but I think that, you know, it's gonna take, uh, you know, the more choices people have in terms of deployment um, and financing uh, options, uh, I think is, is for the good, right? So. Uh, so there's that. The joining the global drive to zero really helps us with. Um, uh, well, you know, they say that if you're going to start a business, the first thing you do is you tell everybody you know, right? So uh, <laughs> you know, it keeps everybody's feet to the fire and lets everybody know what your commitment is. And so I think global drive to zero does that for us. Uh, 
and it, it helps align everybody's interests and under, and gets everybody kind of rowing in the same direction. So uh, we're, we're really pleased to be part of it. Well, and Steve, we're so fortunate to have you to be a part of the partnership and uh, couldn't think of a better fleet partner with all the progress that you're making. So maybe tell us a little bit about where IKEA is heading next. I know you work in New York, LA. What's the next yeah. market? Well, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're going to focus on kind of lighting up, if you will, our, the, uh, the only bits of real estate we have in most of these markets, which is our stores. And, uh, and so we, we are going to be installing a lot of infrastructure over the next uh, uh, little while here. Um, and then, you know, to the, to each market is gonna be a little bit different in its, uh, in its deployment of electric vehicles because there's some dependency on where the store is located relative to the, uh, to the population center in that, in that market or relative to our third party providers distribution break a bulk point, right? So, uh, so some markets are gonna be, uh, are gonna be um, uh, more advantageous than others. But I think what we're doing now is we're setting the table to, uh, to light up maybe 25, maybe more stores over the next couple of years and get mm -hmm. that project going. And then once the infrastructure is in, then the, the, the current rental model that we've deployed for truck access for independent contractors uh, will allow us to deploy vehicles uh, in those markets, um, hopefully kind of at will. Uh, so once the infrastructure is in, then we can deploy the vehicles. And so we're, 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 uh, we're trying to move uh, at, a, at a fast pace from this point forward. Well, great. Thank you for those lessons, Steve, and for your commitment. We will continue to work with you as hard as we can, particularly now to work on that infrastructure piece, uh, not just in LA, where we need to keep pushing it forward, but elsewhere. So thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Thank you. Well, you know, fleets like IKEA can't move forward without product and infrastructure, as we talked about. The product's coming, but we need to get more of it. And that's why we're so excited to get a hands-on look at a really fast moving manufacturer, big name, but fast moving now in this whole new segment. And that is Navistar Next E-Mobility. So let's go live to Rochester Hills, uh, Michigan and to their headquarters building. And we've got a, a chance to meet this morning with their business development engineer, Kyle Mackey. And we'll also be meeting very soon with Jason Gies there as well. So first of all, uh, good morning, I guess, good afternoon to you in Michigan, uh, Kyle, great to see you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us. Well, it's just a pleasure. And I see we're, we're at the uh, headquarters for Next and your facilities there. And behind you is a, a fully electrified school bus. What can you tell us uh, about what's unique about what, what uh, Navistar and your IC Corporation are bringing to engineering a fully electric school bus? Yes, sir. So here at Navistar Next E-Mobility, you really offer a true end-to-end -end solution for our customers. Uh, we do a little bit of route simulation, charging infrastructure suggestions, uh, and really bring a whole great quality product to our customer. The bus behind me is actually a 315 kilowatt hour uh, bus. We have three different battery pack options, 105, 210, and 315 kilowatts. Our bus comes standard with AC and DC charging capabilities. Wow. Another cool feature with our bus that we believe is separates us from our competition is we actually have three levels of regenerative braking. Uh, this helps with driver efficiency and really allows the driver to enjoy one pedal driving. So uh, that's, that's a great feature we offer. Uh, we've got a state-of-the-art glass instrument cluster with all of our uh, uh, electric vehicle information available. Um, we've got a couple of charge port op opportunities. We'll show you those two different locations. Um, let's take a walk down the yeah, side of the bus. Let's, let's yeah. do that. I think that would be great. Yeah. So like our other buses, we keep a standard bus, very familiar to our drivers today. Uh, obviously our best in class entry door and some of the other features everybody loves. Um, this bus right here on the side is our battery throw management system. This system keeps the batteries happy. Batteries are like humans, we say. They like to be 75, 80 degrees. This system, all that does is keep those batteries happy, heat and cooled as necessary. Like I said, this is a uh, 276 inch wheelbase bus. We have two charge port options, one in the front behind the door and one in the back like this one today. Our buses also have a optional fuel fire heater to help with those colder climates. As I said, we use a CCS1 combo for AC and DC charging. We have a uh, indicator light to let us know our ch charging status and then emergency release handle if necessary. Okay, so we build a great quality bus. We have great dealers, great support, and our customers are really enjoying the product we've delivered so far. Well, great. Hey. But what 
Go ahead, Alicia. Oh, I just couldn't wait to get my question in. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, this bus looks awesome. Uh, thank you so much for walking us around it. Now, is this bus available for purchase today? And then maybe share with us some other offerings that you guys are providing to provide support. Yes, ma'am. This bus is available today. Uh, we're building them in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, as we speak. We have other offerings coming out later this summer. Our Class 6 straight rail truck. Uh, our new EMV, a whole new look is launching this summer. Keep an eye out for that out at the ACT show. Um, and then we're also dabbling in the class eight stuff. We have a great partnership with uh, GM. We just announced earlier this year uh, to develop fuel cell class eight semi trucks. So a lot of exciting stuff. Uh, the Navistar Next facility is here for our customers. As I said, a true end to end solution and helping them electrify their fleet. Well, Kyle, thank you. And this is so great to see that. And I know Next offers infrastructure planning support along with the vehicles, but I'm an impatient guy. Can we take a ride in one of these babies? I'm glad you asked. Let's go. <laughs> okay, good. I'll hand you off to Jason now, okay? All right. Thanks so much, Kyle. No problem, guys. Have a great time. Hey, Jason. Bill. Hey, Alicia. It's great good. to see you guys today. Jason. Welcome to, hi, welcome to our brand new electric IC bus. We're excited to have you today. So why don't we go for a ride? Absolutely, let's do it. <laughs> Wait so a minute, I, I, don't, I don't hear an engine, Jason. What's going yeah, on it's, here? It's amazing, isn't it? We wouldn't be able to do this in a standard bus. It's completely, totally silent. We're uh, very, very happy with the, the quietness of it. So it, it is wonderful. So tell us about that uh, regen that, uh, that Kyle was talking about. What does that mean to a driver? Yeah, so we um, have what we feel the industry leading regen setting. So we give our customers options as you regen. So we have our, I am currently in level one. We have three different levels. I can bump it up to a level two and then all the way to a level three. This gives you true one pedal drive. Wow, and that's a lot less distracting for a driver, but also you can, it sounds like, it looks like just what you just did there is that you just, coasted right to a stop you didn't even use the brakes correct we have it so the brakes still have to be applied at a one to two mile an hour speed but for safety and no rollback um and so so our, so our drivers are still forced to use that but through the complete deceleration portion of it it's all one pedal drive Wow, that's uh, that that is. Uh, tell tell me about the uh, you know one of the things I heard uh, Kyle also talking about was an information cluster. I, I don't quite get what that means. Yeah, uh, why so, is that important? So this bus is launching with our brand new digital cluster. It's the first IC bus to have it, and as you can see here, it's fully digital across. Um, I'll take you through it real quick, Bill. We've got our regen. We've got our um, amount of battery percentage. Uh, we've got our normal FMVSS um, air tank gauges, and then our battery temperature, our motor temperature, and a speedometer, and our low voltage, just like a normal. You can also see our levels of regen on here. So how are your customers responding? Are they, are they going for the big battery version? Or are they going for the small battery version? What are you seeing so far? We're seeing a nice mix, I would say. Uh, a lot of our customers are still in that mid-level 210 kilowatt battery range. Uh, but we are seeing a nice take rate on the big battery. Right now, I think a lot of our customers still have range anxiety, so we're not seeing much on the low battery, but we'll see that, I think, in the future. Hey, Jason, wow. I'm loving, well, first of all, just that we're having this interview and it's so quiet and... Uh, <laughs> That's such a difference from my memory of riding the school bus and it being quite loud. Uh, so that's pretty remarkable. Um, you also shared with us in a prior conversation about some nice kind of sounds to make sure that folks know that a bus is coming. Um, do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. And, and you can, I don't think you guys can hear it in here. We try to make it very seamless to the driver. It's more of a whooshing sound and not any ice cream truck noises or music that gets annoying to drivers and we've had a lot of our customers complain about um, other things they've seen in the industry so we've made it really quiet to the driver but a person outside that the bus is approaching can hear it well jason this has been so much fun and it's been great not just to see it on the outside but to see it in action i know you've had it around the country uh, california out to the, up into canada and out to the east coast 
we're going to have to drop off from you now. So thank, but thank you so much for the ride. This has been great to be aboard this quiet, clean school bus. Well, thanks, Bill. Cheers to you guys and have a great afternoon. You All too. Right. Thanks so much. Right back at you, my friend. <laughs> now, Take care. That, Alicia, that was fun. That, that was fun. <laughs> Well, sadly, that's also all the fun we can afford to have right now because we're going to have to uh, call it a half hour here at CPTU. We'll have to uh, <laughs> we'll have to mute the Navistar feed from Rochester Hills. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us today, Alicia, and I have just loved being with you. We will be releasing a take five next week on June 25th. Our next live broadcast of CCTU is going to be on July 16th. For Alicia Gildy and the CCTU team, I'm Bill Van Amberg. And for all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. Uh, to my son, Jack, and daughter, Jesse, thanks for the joy you bring me every day. Stay safe, everybody, and we will CCTU soon.